Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. For today, we're going to continue with our ARD session for our Nibard exam. And for today's topic, we are going to discuss on agriculture engineering and farm machinery. So as always, we're going to divide it into two parts. So let's start off with our part one today. Uh, so if you guys haven't subscribed yet, please don't forget to subscribe as well as you can press the bell icon for further notifications. So uh, right now, let's understand what an agriculture, uh, agricultural engineering is, right? So what is agriculture engineering? So agriculture engineering is the engineering uh, discipline that studies agriculture production as well as the processing, right? Or it can also be defined as a branch of engineering which deals with the construction, the design and improvement of the farm equipment and machineries, right? So, uh, so this agriculture engineering, it combines various disciplines of engineering such as mechanical, civil, electrical uh, and chemical engineering principles along with the agricultural principles. So this will help in combination of agriculture and agriculture principles together to make uh, the, uh, to make the whole working processes and practices more easier, right? So uh, the main or the key goal of this discipline is to improve the efficacy and uh, make uh, the agriculture practices more sustainable. Uh, now let's go to uh, another uh, one, which is farm machinery and farm power. So let us go to what let us understand what a farm power is. So a farm power is it is used for operating different types of machinery like the tillage or planting, plant protection, harvesting, threshing, missionaries and other stationary jobs like operating, irrigation, uh, treasures, shellers, cleaners, guard, uh, guard graders. So these are some of the activities that why uh, these uh, activities of agriculture and for, that's why we need a farm power okay so uh, now let's go to what a farm mechanization is our farm mechanization or mechanized agriculture is the process of using an agriculture machinery right to mechanize the work of agriculture so this will in turn help in the uh, farm worker productivity right and these is an effective mechanization um, process where it contributes to increase the production in two major ways okay remember the first one here is a timeless of operations right and second one is the good quality work okay so these are something on farm mechanization so the basic uh, or the basic concept of a farm mechanization would involve principle of of engineering and technology to the agriculture operations so this will help in the better uh, crop yields and production so this will uh, include the development application and management of mechanical aids for field operations uh, and water control, material hand handling, as well as as well as in the storage uh, facilities and processing of the agriculture producers, and it has a lot of uh, benefits. Uh, as it is a uh, timeliness of operation it can be uh, done anytime right and uh, it is more precise and it also improves the work environment and it uh, work environment and it will reduce the labor right and due to this uh, the reduction in the crop losses will be lesser and it will increase as it will increase the productivity of the land and it will also help in progress and prosperity in the rural areas so these are something about the farm mechanization right and now let's go to our next uh, sources of the farm mechanization uh, power. So uh, it is very important to know from where these sources or from where this power is coming. Uh, so from where this farm power is coming, uh, to, so that we can help in the agriculture, we can incorporate in the agriculture practices. So the first uh, form of farm power is human power, right? And the second one is animal power. The third one is mechanical power. The fourth is electrical power, and the last one here is renewable energy. 
right now now let's go to what a human power is right so human power it is a main source of energy for operating small implements and tools at the farm okay so human power is one of the most uh, primitive methods of and most widely used in agriculture even till date if you can see uh, a lot of we've been even till date we've been using a human uh, power for running the operations in agriculture right so some of the work that can be done through this are like chaff cutting water lifting threshing winnowing right and some of the field works can be done uh, that can be done through this are weeding broadcasting which is another which is a method of sowing right so these are all involves all the manual labor right so here in this picture i've just given some of the uh practices of how a human power can help in the agricultural practices the first one here is of a people doing a paddy nursery collection and the nursery transport we'll have a paddy transplanting uh, then we'll be doing some weeding right and lastly we'll be going for winnowing so these are some of the practices involved in the paddy uh, cultivation that how in such a way that how a human power can be of help right so uh, there are certain uh, advantages of these human power as well right so certain advantages are um, it is easily available and it can do all types of work so it is more flexible right but then again we also have some limitations such as uh, it is more costlier right so for the labor charge labor charge is also costlier but it is very inefficient okay and it also requires a full maintenance right so and accordingly to the weather conditions and environment and season it can be inefficient and it can change right so uh, one thing guys uh, an average man can develop a power of about 0 0.1 hp right and a woman labor can develop a half of a man which will make up to 0 0.05 hp so HP would be your horsepower, okay? Right, so this is quite, uh, uh, it's very important. Try to memorize this, right? So it can also come in the exam, right? So now let's go to what an animal power is. So basically in an animal power, we'll be using animals, right? Such as buffaloes, uh, camels, horses, donkeys, mules, and elephants. So these, all these animals will be used in an agricultural practices. So even, even now as well in India, we use, uh, uh, we still use a lot of blocks uh, and all these animals for, uh, for uh, doing all the operations in agriculture, all the heavy load operations in agriculture practices, right? So the average power, uh, which can be developed by a pair of bullocks, right, is one HP, right? So this is important, right? So form to form the uh, for the farm operation, right? So these bullocks are employed to all types of work in all seasons as well. So again, it also has uh, certain limitations, right, and uh, ad uh, and advantages as well. Okay, so uh, the main advantages can be it is mostly uh, easily available everywhere, and it is can be used uh, for all types of work. And there is a, a limited or lesser investment in it, and it can also, other than that, can also supply us manures, which is a very important um, material, raw material for agriculture practices, right? And it also can add fuels to farmers, and it also can improve the lives of the farm, uh, life of the farmers more easier right but again it also has certain limitations and disadvantages to it that these uh animal power is very uh, it's not very efficient and even the seasons and the weather can change its efficiency and uh it will be needing a break so it won't be able to con uh, work for the whole 24 7 right and it also requires full maintenance right and uh quite slow and doing getting doing the work or getting the work done right and so these are something about animal power now let's go to what a mechanical power is so mechanical power it includes a stationary oil engines uh, it will include tractors power tillers and self propelled combines right so an internal combustion engine is a good device for converting liquid fuel into a useful work 
right? So that is a mechanical work. So here we'll be using a combustion uh, engine or a fuel to convert it into a mechanical work. There are two types of engine. The first one is a spark engine and the second one here is a compression engine a compression engine right so this spark engine spark engine uh, it is a uh, which is also known as an si engine and it is a type of engine uh, where the combustion takes place by the spark which is generated by the spark plug okay so because of the high temperature it will create a spark and some of the example for this will be your uh, an example for this would be your petrol engine right and uh, otherwise in a compression engine which is also known as a ci engine the air is compressed with the cylinder and heat of the cylinder of this compressed air is used to um, ignite the fuel right so this uh, these are the main differences between this si engine and uh, combustion engine and compression engine so in compression engine uh, the most uh, widely used is a, uh, a diesel so for the efficiency thermal efficiency of the compression engine which is a diesel engine it will uh, vary from about a 35 to 38 percent right and for the spark engine or the petrol or kerosene engine it will uh, the, it will vary from about 25 to 32 percent so in modern days uh, almost all the tractors and power tillers these are operated by the diesel engines right so uh, some of the diesel engines which are used for operating these are also used for operating uh, irrigation pumps flour mills uh, in the cotton uh, on the cotton gins chaff cutter sugarcane crushers threshers as well as the windowers as well okay Right, so now let's go to uh, electrical power. The electrical power is mostly used for operating an electrical motor in the farms. Right, so here it is the most cleanest and the most efficient source of energy. Right, so here we just use an electricity to convert it into a mechanical energy. So here the electrical power is used for operating pump sets, high tech nurseries, a dairy industries, cold storage, farm product processing, food industries, and food uh, food processing industries as well. So again, also have certain advantages as well as disadvantages. And some of the advantages would be it is a cheap form of power and it has a very high efficiency. So it can also work in all stretches of uh, time for a longer period uh, if you compare it to the other uh, f other fan power as well right so but the maintenance and operating cost is also low and it's, it is not affected by the seasons or the weather changes right so but again it has certain disadvantages as the initial capital or the investment is higher than the rest of the power and it requires a lot of technical uh, knowledge uh, so a person handling it will be requiring certain technical knowledge so a layman cannot just use an electrical device without knowing uh, some of this technical knowledge without having any technical knowledge right so other than that it also can cause a certain danger because we are you because an electricity is also getting involved these are something on an electrical uh, power. Now let's go to our renewable energy, right? So renewable energy it is one of the most sustainable and uh, and most environmental friendly, um, a friendly form of a, a farm power, right? So uh, it is an energy which is obtained from renewable sources like sun, water, wind, and biomass. So in biomass energy, the biogas. Uh, biogas biomass energy uh, we will produce uh, biogas uh, produce a gas ethanol as well as biodiesel so we'll be using wind energy and solar energy these are also widely and highly used in agriculture and domestic purposes for suitable devices so some of the uses or the usage of renewable energy sources are in solar energy we can have a solar dryers we can have lanterns cookers solar stills solar refrigerators as well as the solar lighting right there and for wind energy we can go for water pumping electricity generation as well so for biomass we can have a gasifier to produce a uh, produce a gas right to pyrolysis to produce liquid gases we can also produce a biogas through this and for tidal energy we can generate electricity and geothermal where we uh, where we 
incorporate this heat and electrical electricity production right so these are something on the usage of the uh, renewable energy sources right so now let's go to another topic which is on a tillage uh, it's a very important operation right in agriculture and uh, let us understand what a tillage is a tillage is a mechanical manipulation of a soil to provide a very favorable conditions for proper growth uh, and this is called a tillage right so a soil uh, tillage will consist of breaking the compact surface of the earth or the soil to a certain depth uh, so that it will make the uh, soil loosen it well, it will make the soil a bit loosen it up and it will loosen the soil mass and it will enable the roots of the crops to penetrate and spread in the soil properly right so why do we use this so why do we use this tillage so tillage are mostly uh, used for uh, disrupting the pest and uh, diseases uh, which are or the microorganisms are uh, non-beneficial microorganisms in the soil right so it will expose the uh, these pests and the eggs or the disease uh, microbes into uh, from in the soil it will expose them to the sun and sun is a natural uh, killer for all of these pests and diseases right so and it will also distribute the soil nutrients throughout the soil it will aerate the soil and it will also help in controlling the weeds as well so and uh, there are two types mainly in agriculture practices there are two types which is a conventional tillage which is just the normal general tillage right and then we also have uh, something called a conservation tillage in conservation tillage the, it is the planting or the sowing in the previous crop residues these are purposely left on the soil surface as a residue right so there are certain uh, methods of conservation tillage such as zero tillage rich tillage and mulch tillage so what is zero tillage here in zero tillage it is also known as minimum tillage or no till at all it's a system where this soil is not disturbed between harvesting of the one crop and planting in the next right so in the rich tillage uh, it is also a specific form of a no till right but then here a bund or uh, from a new crop when a new crop is planted on the uh, it's for, uh, it is planted in a new formed ridges or buns of this previous crops and a mulch tillage the last one which is on a mulch tillage here will be using uh, a system it is a system that ensures a maximum retention of the crop residues on the soil surface right so these are some of the um, things on tillage we have a conservational tillage tillage we have a rich tillage and we also have a mulch tillage okay so these are the different methods of tillage okay and now let's go to the classification of tillage right so we have certain uh, advantages or the objectives of why we use a tillage it is mostly used for the seed bed preparations right and so for that on the basis of seed bed preparation a tillage can be classified into a primary tillage and a secondary tillage Right, so let us understand what a primary tillage is. The, it is the initial major soil working operation designed to plow the soil deeply to reduce the soil strength and cover plant materials and also aggregates. And this is known as the primary tillage. Okay, and some of the primary tillage uh, equipments that we or the implements that are used for primary tillage are mold board plows, disc plows heavy duty disc harrows, soil sub, uh, subsoil plows, chisel plows and other simple, simple, similar implements. So uh, guys, uh, this example of this primary tillage is very important from an exam perspective, right? So try to remember all the uh, implements which uh, are under this primary tillage and as well as for the secondary tillage. In this, I've given an example of a mole board plow. And here this is a disc plow and the last one is of a chisel 
Right, so these are some of the examples of the primary tillage. Uh, the main objectives of the primary tillage can be it will reduce the soil strength, right? And it can it would also rearrange the whole soil because it has been more very compact. So uh, through this primary tillage methods, we can rearrange the soil, and it would also uh, plant. Uh, it will also cover the plant materials and it will also bury the weeds, and it can help. In killing the insect pest as well right so now let's go to our secondary tillage a secondary tillage it is uh, it is a form of a tillage but it is much more lighter and just it is a finer tillage operation which are performed after a primary tillage to create a proper soil tilt so after the heavy work is done by the primary tillage we will go for the secondary tillage where the uh, for example, suppose this is a piece of land, right? So this primary tillage will break this piece of land into aggregates. Okay, so this will be the second step, right? And after this, the secondary tillage, what will it do? It will make these aggregates into a more fine tilt. Right, so it will loosen up and it will make it more finer. Right, so this is the function of a secondary tillage, right? So, and this will also make it much more easier for a person to plant a sapling or a seed inside it, right? So, these secondary tillage, these are mostly uh, done on the surface soil, okay? Right, so in some of the examples of these different types of secondary tillage are of harrows, cultivators, sweeps, cold crushers, levelers, burnt formers, rich flows, etc. So these are uh, again these examples are also very important, right? So try to remember the examples for the secondary tillage as well as the primary tillage. So again the main objective of the secondary tillage will be to break the big plots which is made by the primary tillage, right? And it will also uniform and level up the soil, right? So, and these will also help in cutting the residues and mixing them residues of plant residues and it will also help in mixing up with the topsoil. So, let's go to another topic which is on sowing. Sowing is a very important uh, practice in, in agriculture, right? So what is sowing? Sowing is an art of placing the seed in the soil to have a good germination in the field, right? So uh, certain uh, there are certain various methods of sowing under this, right? So this uh, why do we need to sow the seeds perfectly? Because it will create a per uh, it will create a correct amount of seed per unit area, and it will give a perfect sowing uh, correct depth of the sowing and the correct spacing as well of row to row and the plant to plant so it will also give us a correct seed rate so there are certain types of sowing methods which we mostly practice the first one here is broadcasting second one is dibbling third drilling seed dropping behind the plow fourth is transplanting fifth is uh, sixth is hill dropping and seventh is check row planting. So let, now let us discuss all of these methods of sewing together, right? So the first one here is um, a broadcasting. So broadcasting, it is a method of randomly scattering of the seeds on the surface of the bed. As you can see in the picture, a person is just dropping or scattering the seeds on the soil, right? It, so it can be done manually as well as mechanically. Uh, when a, a broadcasting is uh, done manually, the uniformity of the placement depends on the skill and of the man who is scattering the seeds, right? So soon after uh, we broadcast the seeds, it is very important for us to uh, cover it by a planking or some other devices, right? So it is very important for us to cover it by uh, with the soil by a planker or some other devices and these broadcasting method it is one it is the most primitive method of sowing right now let's go to another method which is known as dibbling it is a process of planting of the seeds in holes which is made uh, in the seed bed and closing the seed with soil 
Okay, so in this method, the seeds are usually placed in the soils which are made at a fine depth and at a fixed spacing. The equipment used for dibbling is called dibbler. As you can see here, right, so in these holes, these are of the perfect uh, these are of the perfect distances between each other and a cert at a certain depth. So what will we do here is that we will place the seeds inside these each of these holes. And after that we are done placing the seeds inside these holes, we will cover it back again with the soil. Right. So this person out here is using a seed dibbler. So this is a seed dibbler, and the end results will look like this. Right, so this is something about dibbling. Right, so now we're going to go to a seed dropping behind the plow. Uh, as the name suggests, a seed is dropped behind a plow. So here, uh, it is a common method of sowing, right? And here, uh, these method, uh, in this method, a woman or a man will be walk, walking behind a plow once the... Uh, once the plower will be going through the land, a person will be standing behind it and he will be dropping the seeds on uh, on the furrows which is made by the plower. But some of the uh, uh, of some of the crops which are uh, mostly commonly used through this method is maize, gram, pea, wheat and barley right so try to remember these examples as well now let's go to a drilling a drilling it is a type of a sowing method where which consists of a dropping of the seeds in a furrow lines in a continuous stream and covering them with soil so these are mostly done through a seed drill Right, so this is an example or a picture of how a seed drill would look like. So here, what will we do in this flask or a conical shape, the seeds will be placed inside it and this, through the seed drill, a furrow is made on the soil. As it goes in the field, a seed will be dropped through this. Right? So basically this method is very helpful in achieving a proper depth and a proper spacing between the seeds and also will be able to know the proper seed weight of the seeds. Right? So these drillers can be done using the seed drills of tractors uh, drawn or it can be an animal types. Remember it can be a tractor drawn type or a animal drawn type. So these can uh, also be done either through manual method or through mechanical method right so manually can be done uh, into uh, manually metered seed drills and mechanically seed metered seed drills right in manually metered seed drills a person drops the seed in the furrow it's more similar to that a seed a seed dropping behind the plow right but then here in mechanical a mechanical device called the seed metering is used Right, and so you will also come across something known as a seed cum fertilizer drill. So in seed cum fertilizer drill, the seed drills, these are fitted with the fertilizers, right? So uh, along with the dropping attachment, and these are known as the seed cum fertilizer drills. So they will not only deliver the seeds into the soil, but also they will be putting the fertilizers simultaneously, right, in an acceptable pattern, right? So these are something on seed drills and now let's go to another method which is known as the transplanting so transplanting consists of raising the seedlings in seed nursery beds and then planting the seedlings into another field so here as example these are called the punnets right or a trays these are also known as a nursery trays so here these are mostly used in rice and in vegetables so anything, uh, basically, uh, the seeds can be classified based on the size as well. Some size, some of the seed sizes are big. Some of the seed size of the seeds are very fine and small, right? So for example, in vegetables, we have certain uh, vegetables like tomatoes, capsicums, chilies, even cabbage, cauliflower. All these need to be raised as a seedling, right? So here. We'll be planting these seeds in certain trays or in a nursery seed beds or in, in or in a trays, right? And after it attains a height, certain height of 10 to 15 centimeter, then 
we will be transplanting it, transplanting it to another main field, right? So this is trans. This method is known as transplanting. So another one here is hill dropping. So in this method, few seeds are dropped as a hill at a fixed place and not in a continuous stream, right? So the, here the uh, uh, spacing between the hill to hill in a row is constant, and the equipment which is used in a plant, uh, which is used, is known as the planter. And now let's go to a last one, which is known as the check row planting. So basically, in this method of planting, in which row to row and plant to plant distance is uniform, in this method, the seeds are planted precisely along a parallel four rows. Suppose these are the four rows, which are parallel to each other, right? So here, a basic line will be there, right? Yeah, in this method, the seed will be planted at a certain distance right from each other and the uniformity is also maintained and uh, in these uh, methods the rows these are always per in a perpendicular directions right and the machine which is usually used for check row planting is known as the check row planter Alright, so I hope you all understood about all the methods of planting and sowing. Well, that's all for today. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe and please press the bell icon as well for further notifications. And if you've liked the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and we'll be meeting for the next session.